Hello, my name is Carissa, and today I'm presenting a frequent test in Bayesian logistic regression in R. Um, so to get started, I'm going to go ahead and load the libraries that I will be using. Um, the data set is publicly available on Kaggle. And just to show you what it looks like, there are 700 observations of three variables, the first being treatment. There's treatment A and treatment B. Treatment A is a surgery. Treatment B is a complex medical term that I'm unsure how to pronounce. We have stone size, small and large. And then we have success coded as one for the, um, the treatment was success and remove the kidney stones or zero for failure and that it didn't remove kidney stones. For the sake of the example today, I'm going to be seeing if treatment um, predicts success. And I'm not accounting for stone size, but hopefully in a future um, recording, I will include that as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the variables that I'm interested in examining. And then I'm gonna uh, convert the classifiers to be a factor. It's a table of the information here, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'll show you this version so we can see the totals and the um, rows and columns. So the rows we have um, the treatments. So this is treatment A and treatment B is in the second row. And you can see that the same number of people um, receive treatment A and, uh, and treatment B for a total of 700. And the columns, we have success, zero meaning the, um, that the treatment was a failure and one meaning that it was a success and the kidney stone was removed. So now um, to go ahead and just, um, I'm gonna compute the probability of success for treatment A by taking success in treatment A, which would be um, row one, position two, and dividing it by the sum of row one. And so that will give me the probability of success, which is 78%. Now to get the odds of success, I divide the probability of success divided by one minus the probability of success. So the odds of success when receiving treatment A is 3.545. Um, and we can do the same thing for treatment B. Probability of success for treatment B is about 83%, which is slightly higher than treatment A. And to get the odds, we can just do success minus one, or success divided by one minus success. So the odds are about 4.74 um, in terms of success for treatment B. Now to get the odds ratio of treatment A to treatment B, um, we can just divide the odds of treatment A divided by the odds of treatment B. So in this case, we get 0.75, which is telling us that treatment B has a, um, or treatment A has lower odds of success because it's less than one um, compared to treatment B. And if we want to maybe make that a little bit easier to understand, we can see that the odds of success for treatment B are 1.34 um, times that of uh, treatment A or they're higher. So we can actually plot this data just to see what's happening here. On the x-axis, we have treatments, so we have treatment A and treatment B. The y-axis, we have counts, so the number of um, people. And this is colored as success um, or by success. So this coral color means that the procedure um, or the treatment was a failure. And this blue bar means that the treatment was successful in removing the kidney stone. And remember, there is the same number of people that receive treatment A and treatment B. And um, knowing that, we can see that it looks like um, maybe a few more people uh, were successful with treatment B. And um, there also appears to be a little bit less um, failures with treatment B. But if we want to actually examine this um, and see if this difference is um, um, if there is a reliable difference here, we can do a regression. So to do a logistic regression, I'm going to use the GLM function, and I'm predicting success by treatment. I have my data set, and the family is binomial. So this is what the output looks like. Um, we can see that the intercept is statistically significant, and the slope coefficient is not. We can interpret this intercept 
to mean um, it is telling us the log odds of success for treatment A. And the slope coefficient is telling us the log odds of success increased by 0.2899 when the person received treatment B compared to treatment A. Uh, this is in log odds again. So if we want to make this more interpretable, we can go ahead and we can exponentiate these numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and store these coefficients into a separate variable. And then I'm going to exponentiate the intercept term. And we get 3.545. And as I mentioned before, um, so this intercept is telling us the log odds of success for treatment A. If we exponentiate it, then we just get the odds of success for treatment A. And this should look familiar because our odds of success for treatment A are in fact um, that same number. And then we can do the same thing for the slope coefficient. If we exponentiate um, the log odds, we just get the odds. So this is the odds of success of treatment B compared to treatment A. And this should also look familiar because we have already computed it. Um, so that's pretty cool. And um, just a good check on um, the information that you're getting in your output. So if we wanted to report this, when reporting these results, we will be focusing on the slope coefficient because that's really what's of interest here because it's telling us the log odds ratio, um, which we can then extract the odds ratio from. The intercept, while interesting, is not necessarily um, important. And so it can be tabled, but again, we're actually going to focus on that slope coefficient. So when reporting the frequentist logistic regression, I could say something like, I conducted a logistic regression to examine the ability of treatment A or B to predict success in removing a kidney stone with outcomes of success or failure. The slope coefficient is 0.29, which corresponds to odds of 1.34, favoring treatment B over treatment A. However, because the corresponding 95% confidence interval overlaps with one, um, which would be equal odds, this suggests that the, the advantage of treatment B over treatment A is not statistically significant. So now we can move on to the Bayesian logistic regression. I'm gonna go ahead and run this while I talk because it's gonna take a second to compile the STAM program and sample. Um, I'm using the BRMS package and the BRM function. Again, predicting success by treatment of the same data set. For family, I'm using a Bernoulli distribution with a logit link. Um, I have specified warm up iterations, chain scores, and seed just to get the same result. Again, you can vary the warm up and iterations and chains based on your needs. Um, but for this data set, it runs fine with just 2,000 iterations. Um, and it ran while we were talking. Um, so now you go ahead and look at a summary of the output. And you might notice, hey, these numbers look really familiar. And you would be right. Um, we observe the same intercept in the frequentist uh, logistic regression. And the estimate was, um, I think it's different by a decimal place. Um, yes, yeah, so we observed 0.29 in the frequentist framework. But in the Bayesian framework, we observed uh, 0.28. So again, extremely comparable. To reiterate, this is the log odds of success of treatment A, and this is the um, slope coefficients telling us the log odds of success of treatment B compared to treatment A, so the log odds ratio. And then we have our 95% credible intervals. We can see that the intercept does not overlap with zero. However, the slope coefficient does overlap with zero. Um, and then looking at the R hat, it is at one, which is what we want to see. It means that it's um, just an indication that the model converged or that the chains converged. And then looking at the bulk effective sample size and tail effective sample size, considering the uh, total number of iterations, um, this looks ideal because we can see that it is effectively sampling from the bulk of the distribution and from the tails of the distribution. Um, so I did not specify a prior because I don't have any prior assumptions. So I went ahead and I used the default priors in the BRM um, as package, which in this case applies a um, flat prior, uniform prior to the slope coefficient and a student um, T 
T distribution with three degrees of freedom centered at zero with a scale of 2.5 um, to the intercept. And um, these default priors um, give us very similar results as we would, as we saw in the frequentist framework. Again, that's to be expected because we're not really incorporating any other um, assumptions or prior beliefs into um, this model. So now if I wanna maybe make this a little bit easier to interpret, I can take, I can exponentiate um, the posteriors, what I observed. Um, and this is just gonna give us the odds. So we're not thinking about log odds. Now we can interpret this as odds. So um, we are 95% um, um, confident that the intercept is between these values, as well as um, we are 95% confident that the slope coefficient is between these values. Um, since I've exponentiated it, um, if you exponentiate zero, you get one, which means that since this slope coefficient overlaps with one, we are again not completely certain that there is um, an effect here. Now we can go ahead and just plot the posteriors. And I'm uh, plotting the log odds here. So you can notice the scale. This is the log odds. Um, and looking at these chains, it looks like they converged and there's good mixing, which is what we want to see. And then we have the posterior distributions right here. We see that the intercept did not overlap with zero. However, um, the slope coefficient, again, in log odds form did overlap with zero. Um, and we'll look at that in a second. We can look at the autocorrelation, which is just telling us the correlation between the different um, sampling steps. And we want this to be kind of centered around zero, which is exactly what we see here. So this looks great. So if we wanted to report that, I could say something like, I conducted a logistic regression to examine the ability of the treatment, A or B, to predict success in removing a kidney stone with outcome success or failure. I applied a student T prior with three degrees of freedom centered at zero with a scale of 2.5 to the intercept and a flat prior to the slope coefficient, which are the default priors in the BRMS package. Uh, the most probable slope coefficient is 0.28, which corresponds to an odds ratio of 1.32, favoring treatment B over treatment A. However, because the corresponding 95% credibility interval overlaps with one, again, equal odds, this suggests the advantage of treatment B over treatment A is not meaningful. Thanks for watching.